as a people to walk faster and faster and faster at a certain pace and it, sometimes you can run in it and if you run uh, you can begin to create sweat you know you're burning off uh, fat from your body whatever you want to call it this morning you're burning off calories you know i guess is the right term and one thing is for certain regarding a treadmill a treadmill has the ability to get a person moving faster without taking them anywhere it creates this illusion that you're going somewhere, but you really haven't gone anywhere at all. You're very much still stationary. And the truth is many people's lives are just like a treadmill. There's a sense of movement. Uh, there's a sense of, you know what, I'm, I'm accomplishing something. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. It's almost, if I'm honest as well, it's very comfortable. I, 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 I like treadmills. I, I, I'm comfortable on the treadmills. I, I can cover great distance on treadmill running, but put me in the road. It's a different dynamic. It's a different struggle because it's the real deal this morning. And this morning, church, I want to preach a sermon I simply call the right move. Because in life, in all of life, it is so important that we are making or we are, we, are, we are moving, you could say, in the right direction this morning. I want to preach at Numbers 9, 15 to 23. Amen. If you read your Bible, you will know this account very, very well this morning. But it's very powerful and all God wants to speak to us about. The Bible says, now, on the day that the tabernacle was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, from evening unto morning, it was above the tabernacle like the appearance of fire. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, after that, the children of Israel would journey. And in the place where the cloud settled, there the children of Israel would pitch their tents. At the command of the Lord, the children of Israel would journey. And at the command of the Lord, they would camp. As long as the cloud stayed above the tabernacle, they remained encamped. Even when the cloud continued long, many days above the tabernacle, the children of Israel kept the charge, did not journey. So it was when the cloud was taken, uh, so it was when the cloud was above the tabernacle a few days, according to the command of the Lord, they would remain encamped. And according to the command of the Lord, they would journey. So it was when the cloud remained only from evening until morning. When the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they would journey. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud was taken up, they would journey, whether it was two days, a month, or a year that the cloud remained above the tabernacle. The children of Israel remained encamped and not journey. But when it was taken up, they would journey. At the time of the Lord, sorry, at the command of the Lord, they remained encamped. And at the command of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord, by the hand of Moses. Father, this morning, we are grateful again to get around your word. Father, this morning, we are grateful again that you have called us by name and we are yours. I'm asking this morning to minister 
to the people of God. I pray, God, they would hear from you, God, regarding the right move. Father, I'm asking this morning, they would not hear their opinion. They would not hear their flesh, but they would hear by the Spirit of God. I'm praying for anyone here who's lost, God, anyone here who's backslid, and I pray today will be the day of their salvation, God, and they will make the move towards you. God, I thank you right now for the privilege of being behind this pulpit. Father, without you, I can do nothing. I need you, God, this morning. God, use me as your minister, as your mouthpiece. God, anointing, oh God, have your way in this place. I thank you for all you're going to accomplish this morning, this service, oh God. We give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I want to look, first of all, this morning at the presence of God, the presence of of God. Anniversaries are very important in the economy of God, in the word of God, in the things of God. Anniversaries. Anniversaries when you, you when you when you when you celebrate or you reflect back to an event that happened in the past. And I believe none one of the greatest anniversaries in the word of God this morning, and one of the biggest is the Passover. In our text, the children of Israel are coming to the second anniversary of the Passover. This is of their deliverance uh, from Egypt. Here they are. They've been in bondage for over 400 years. They finally cry out to God. God raises up a deliverer called Moses. Uh, Moses is sent to deliver the people. Uh, and there's been this back and forth uh, with Pharaoh, uh, the king king of Egypt for a period of time but and, and God decides okay I'm going to begin to send plagues upon plagues upon plagues and we're coming to the 10th plague we're coming to the final plague we're coming to the most devastating plague and it is a plague that God basically says after this Pharaoh is going to let you guys go and God sends Moses to his people and basically tells them you need to begin to get ready to move here is God he's going to move for them he's finally going to do what they have been wanting to do and here is God church he's about to move for them but Pharaoh was in the way this morning of God moving can I say something this morning church if you get in the way of a move of God God has a way of getting you to move this morning if you step in his way when he's about to do something great and powerful, he has a way of moving you or moving me or moving whatever situation uh, out of the way. And finally, after the 10th plague, uh, 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 the, the children of Israel are free. They are, they are able to finally have freedom after over 400 years uh, of bondage. And the Bible tells us they go to Mount Sinai and they are at Sinai for one year, for 12 months. Uh, they have settled there. And while they are there, they are, they are, they are, they are being given given instructions of the law of the of the priesthood of 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 of, of the tabernacle this is the meeting place of, of god and, and after a year after god you can say have downloaded all these things upon them it was now time for them to move now i'll say this morning church i'm not a big fan of moving i began to think about it i have moved in my lifetime i've moved household 11 times if you add nations and if you had churches, I have moved 21 times. Moving can be excruciating. Moving can be very uncomfortable. Moving can be just, oh my, it's just one of those drudgery things that you just don't want. There's so much dynamics, so much logistics, so much things uh, when it comes to moving this morning. If I'm real many times, I would just like to go somewhere and just settle uh, and just chill. And just, that's my home. Uh, that's my place. Uh, that's my station this morning. But I'll tell you right now, uh, the call of God and the will of God doesn't always want to be where I want to be. See, this morning, church, there is something about settling that we like, what God doesn't like. When we went to South Africa and we stayed there, we were there basically 11 years. We, we were in the same house for 11 years. And while we we're there, we got to know both our neighbors on both sides, even across the streets. Uh, we, we began to basically make a life. You know, we're there, we kind of, we just kind of entrenched ourselves and settled and we began to make a life, you could say, of things and began to meet new people and began to establish, you know, you know, you know, familiar environments and et cetera and so forth. And, and I'm saying that this morning, churches, when you move this morning, church, it takes time to begin to do those things again. 
that when we left South Africa and came back to the UK, it, we, we had to come back and almost start all over again. We basically had to start all over again with neighbors and friends and people, et cetera, and so forth. It was just, it was just, just, just this challenging and difficult time. And I want you to see this this morning. Here is Israel. Israel has been on Mount Sinai and for one year. They have been, they have been stationed there for a whole year. And you can imagine in their minds, this is, this is my spot. And over there is where the Levites live. And over there is the coins. That's there. And they, they kind of they're, they're kind of familiar. They've they've settled down and they're comfortable uh, where they are. In Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 6 to 7, the Bible says, Now when the, uh, they had gone uh, through uh, Pythag uh, Pythagora and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word uh, in Asia. After they had come to Mysra, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit uh, did not, uh, amen, permit them. Here is Paul. He wants to go and do something. He wants to go to a certain place. But the Bible says God would not allow him. God would not permit him. God would not let Paul settle. Now, why wouldn't God let Paul settle this morning? Because God was taking Paul somewhere. If you know your Bible, the next place after this place is when Paul has the Macedonian call and God calls Paul through a dream. Amen. And God begins to move in a very powerful way this morning. And as we look at the book of Numbers, Numbers really is a record of the children of Israel journey throughout the witness uh, the wilderness uh, and God begins to lead them uh, he begins to take the one place after another uh, and one of the places they find themselves uh, as they leave Sinai they come to an uh, oasis they come to a uh, oasis an oasis this morning is especially in the desert is a paradise uh, it is a place where you have water where you have life uh, where there are palm trees uh, around where uh, things are flourishing and here they are they come to this oasis uh, as they've left Sinai and I'll tell you right now, in a desert again, oasis, uh, amen, it is a paradise, it's the place uh, you want to be, it's the place uh, you desire, it's a place uh, you can settle there this morning, but that's not where the will of God had for their lives. So they move again. And as they leave this oasis, they come to the Red Sea again. I want you to picture uh, uh, that, not just, uh, uh, I want you to picture, amen, in your mind, the Maldives and, and just, just that, that tranquil and beautiful place. They come to this beautiful, tranquil place it is the Red Sea. They pitch, I, I can live by the sea, amen. I can live, uh, amen, my house just across the beach, uh, amen, white sand, uh, blue waters, uh, amen, just like Jamaica, uh, just like Barbados, uh, just like the Maldives. I can live there all day, every day. Give me that. No problem at all. But church, that, that was not where God wanted them. They move again. The next place they move, and I want to look at where God takes them next. It's found in Numbers chapter 33, verse 11. The Bible says they moved from the Red Sea and they, they camped in the wilderness of sin. The wilderness of sin. The wilderness of sin. I wonder, did the world of sin, did it live up to his name? That once they got their own madness began to take place. That somehow, the they had left these two beautiful places. And now they end up in the wilderness of sin. Why am I saying it this morning, church? It is human nature to want to settle in a nice place. See, whenever God's presence is, wherever you find the presence of God this morning, church, that is also where the blessing of God is resides as well. I remember years ago, uh, while I was here, I was still in, in um, uh, uh, Archway then, and, and the church, they sent me, uh, this is the first time they had done this, they sent me uh, to South Africa, and I went there, and I went to preach for several churches there. One of the places I went to was a place called King Williamstown. It's about, it's about 130 miles away from Queenstown, where I eventually ended up going. And when I was there, I'll tell you right now, that church was that church was unique in all the nation of South Africa. It was still, it was, apartheid was still fresh. It was still very much in the air. But what was special about this church is this church had white people, had black people, had Indian people, had China, had every, it really, it really, the South Africans, they call them the Rainbow Nation. And that church really represented the Rainbow Nation. Because if you went to South Africa, many churches, the majority of the church is either black or it's white or it's in the full stop. Full stop. The majority. I'm talking about maybe 98%, if not more, of all the churches in that nation was that way. But this church was unique. Everybody was there. 
Everybody was there. It was. It, it had young people. He had old people. And I'll tell you right now, church, it was rocking. It was. It was. It was. It, 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 it was. It, it was phenomenal. It was a phenomenal experience. And I remember telling the pastor, "Listen, I, I said to him, listen, I, I can sell here, but here's the problem with King. King was near enough the murder capital of the Eastern Cape." It was a crazy place. All, ma all manner of wickedness and, and debauchery and, 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 and sin and evil was taking place in King. But yet we see something very else, very powerful, taking place in King. See, what I want you to see this morning is what made King Williamtown a great place to serve God. It was not the environment, church. What made it a great place to serve God was the fact that God was there. God was moving there. There's an old saying, an old Pentecostal saying that says you need to get under the spout where the glory comes out. And that is exactly what God wanted to do um, with his people. He wanted them to get into his presence uh, because where God was, church, was simply the place uh, to be. Um, and for them, it was simply a case of following uh, the cloud. Verse 21 says, uh, so it was when the cloud remained only from evening unto morning, uh, when the cloud was taken up in the morning, uh, then they would journey, whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud was taken up, uh, they would journey. I want to ask a very, very important question this morning. The place where you have settled down right now in life, is the presence of God there? You've settled wherever it is. Listen, I'm not talking about your residential address. I'm talking about the the life where you settle down. I'm talking about where you are spiritually. Have you gotten comfortable? Have you made a life of where you are now? Have you come to a place where you finally got everything you want and everything's in all your ducks, you could say, is in a row and you've made a life of where you are now because you now have this, you now have that, you now have all these things. Is the presence of God in that place? Is that where God wants you to be in your life right now? Or is God wanting to unsettle you and move you this morning? So let's consider God's direction. Because today, I tell you right now, church, we are assaulted by many, many voices. There are many different sources of, of advice and direction for our lives all around us. And I believe this morning, for most of us, the number one voice we listen to is ourselves. Listen, we've bought the lie of Hollywood. What's the lie of Hollywood? Listen to your heart. Let your heart lead you. Your heart knows which way to go. We bought that nonsense that somehow our heart is going to... Let me tell you what the Bible says about heart. It's wicked. That's what the Bible says. That's what God says. And, to, and, and it's not just wicked. The Bible says it's deceitful. It's not going to be truthful to you. It's not going to be honest with you. Proverbs 14, 12 says this, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in the way of death. Listen to me, that man and that woman is you. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. We want to do what we want to do. So we listen to us. That's the number one voice in our lives this morning. Second of all, a lot of people listen to their friends. Now, this could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on who your friend is. Let me keep it very simple because of time. Is your friend saved? Is your friend filled with the Holy Ghost? Is your friend living for God? Number three, a lot of people this morning, they listen to the direction given by their families this morning. I'll say it again. Is your family this morning, eh? are they saved, mature Christians? Because we listen to our families this morning. But also many people today, they listen to society for the direction or how to act, but also what to believe. Listen, church, there are many people in our society today that want to shape our beliefs. There are many people in our society today, this morning, they want to tell us how we live, how we should live, what we should buy, 
and what we perceive as morally acceptable. Let me tell you what the Bible says about this kind of people. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says this, Woe to them who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's what the Bible says. And the bottom line is this this morning, church. Listen to me. We need God to direct us. And the right move this morning, listen to me, the right move for every single one of us this morning is when we move with God. Here, are, there's so many things this morning that we have not ventured into. There are so many things this morning, church, we think we have it all covered. We think we know, but we have no idea about. We have no idea about parenting. We don't. Listen, we have no, I, I have, listen, I'm still, Pastor Mitchell says, after you've done 10 years, you've done your apprenticeship as a pastor. I'm just getting going. I remember when I first got sent out, I remember when I first got sent out, and there was this, I, 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 we're out, we're on, on the high road and archway there, and, and there's, there's, there was six people in the church then, and, 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 and one of the ladies came to me, came to me, she said, Pastor, and she began to tell me how her husband has beaten her, puts her in a chain sometimes, and just punches her in the, all these matter of things. Pastor, what should I do? Do you know what I did? I said, let's pray. We prayed. And afterwards, I ran across the road, pulled my mobile phone, called my pastor. Pastor! No idea. I never had to do this. You don't get to do that in the body of Christ. When you're part of your disciple and just kind of working things out and just growing, just following. I never had to deal with that before. What the heck do I do? Call them straight away. We have no idea about salvation. Listen, we think we have it all covered, covered in life, then life happens to us. And we have no idea about life either. We have no idea about how it's all going to work out, how what's we're going to do. See, here are people this morning, church. They're stepping into uncharted territory. All they've known is Egypt. All they've had, you could say, is a predictable life. All Listen to me. All, if, if, if they had the playlist on their phone, it would be work, 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 work. That's what it was. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what they did. They got up and work, 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 work. Everybody must work, work, work. That's it. That's what they had. That's that, that's did they get up and, and you know here we go <laughs> nothing more nothing less listen they may have had some respite in, in the sense of you know they had some cucumbers and and melons and leeks and and onions and garlic but apart from that there wasn't too much about life that was unusual there wasn't too much about life that was unpredictable there wasn't too much about life that was supernatural in church, when you are living this kind of life this morning, you don't need any direction. This is all kind of set. It's all kind of just there. So the problem with too many Christians today is their lives are so predictable. And we'll go quiet now. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm so busy. You're busy doing what? What, what, what exactly are you busy doing? Because your life is very predictable. So what there is this morning is there's such an absence of God moving in their life that they, they don't need any direction now. And what this leads to us is now we no longer need faith in our lives anymore. And I tell you right now, church, this is not the kind of life that God wants his people to live. Here are the people of God, church. They're stepping into the unknown. They didn't know which way to go. They, 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 they you know, they've, they've always, they've all they've known is, is is Sinai. All they've known is the mountain. All they've and, and here they are. It's time for them to go. It's time for them to move on from this. And there's probably a sense of, you know, what I have no idea what to, where, where we gonna go, how we gonna get there. Where we, they, 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 there was this, this kind of in, in their mind. There's this sense of, you know, what not just the unknown this morning, but felt the feeling alone. But they were not alone because God was going to lead them. The Bible tells us by the mount, God had given them the instructions of the tabernacle. This is this is this is the meeting place of God. And once the tabernacle was erected, once it was built, the Bible tells us, uh, Amen. That the tabernacle was to be at the center of the people of Israel. They were to march 
in, 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 in three different companies, one in the front, one in the back, one in the side, one in the left, that in, that's 12 uh, tribes altogether. And then they were to march uh, with three, sorry, four, uh, uh, three different companies, four ways. Uh, and right in the middle was a tabernacle. And the Bible tells us the fire of God, uh, though this cloud will come down uh, and it will settle on the tabernacle uh, and, and they'll begin to move. Uh, amen. Uh, as, and, 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 as, uh, and as they move, uh, the Bible says this cloud come and move to the front uh, and it begins to direct them which to go uh, and wherever the cloud would stop uh, they would stop there uh, and they were a uh, camper uh, around uh, amen the tabernacle again and the cloud would come uh, and settle in the middle uh, and what that cloud would have represented this morning uh, it meant that God was near to them uh, it meant that God was to be at the center of their life uh, the Bible says there was a cloud uh, during the day uh, and a pillar of fire during the night this morning uh, and what it was was God was guiding them this morning and the key to God getting them to where they needed to be was complete obedience that whenever they stopped, wherever the cloud stopped, they were to stop. And whenever the cloud moved, they were to go. Wherever the fire stopped, they were to stop. And when the fire moved, they were to go. It was absolute, complete obedience. Here is God's presence with his people, amongst his people. And verse 16 of our text says, always. There are so many unknown in life. And perhaps the biggest and the greatest unknown is death. But even in that unknown this morning, church, God still leads us. Psalms 23, 4, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. That in this unknown called death, even God steps in and leads his people. Even God steps in and he guides his people. Even God steps in and he begins to take us where we want to, or should I say where we need to be. See, church, if we are to be directed, we need to depend on God. See, what was going on in this account was God was teaching his people dependency on him by simply directing their movements. Verse 17 of our text, the Bible says, when, whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, after the children of Israel would journey in the place where the cloud settled, there the children of Israel would pitch their tent. I want you to think about what the Bible says this. When the cloud was taken, they'll go. And where, not when, where it stopped, they stopped. This will go on maybe for a short period of time. This will go on sometimes for a year. This was, the, the cloud may stay for a short period of time. The cloud may stay for a year. But whenever it would go, they were to be ready to go. And whenever it stopped, they would stop, they would pitch their tent, and they would, they would encamp there. And the Bible says this was done, verse 18, at the Lord's command. Listen to me, church. They, they did not act without God. You are a fool today if you act without God. They refuse to do anything without God leading them. They refuse to take, they wouldn't even take a step. If God wasn't going to lead them, they're not going. And wherever God led them, they went. There was no, you know, you know, God, I don't like this place. God, I hate this. Right, right, right. Why should I do this? Right. No, no, they just simply obeyed God. And as they did that, church, they were blessed. I think about David. King David, when David acted with God, we saw David at his best. We saw him in the grace and the anointing and the power of God behind this man. But when David did not act with God, again, remember Psalms 23 again. Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Here it is, church. He leads me see one of the greatest dangers you face as a christian is that you will no longer need god to lead you now you come to a place i've got this now i know what i'm doing i've got it all figured out i don't need this see once the people of god crossed their, over the red sea everything was completely new territory and it required them to believe God for their survival. The Bible says, if any man being Christ, he's what? 
is new. That all the old things have gone away. Behold, all things have become what? New. Church, have you been to that place lately? When was the last time you really believed God for something? When was the last time you said, God, if you don't? A couple of things this morning, church. God leads us one step at a time. There's an old saying that says, the journey of a thousand miles begins with what? A single step or one step. Many of us, we've heard about this man called Usain Bolt. You know, 100, 100, 100 meters uh, world record holder, et cetera, and so forth. Well, the reason Usain Bolt was so impactful was his stride. The reason he was so fast was his stride. And what that means is this. Usain Bolt, compared to everybody else this morning, was able to cover more distance with less stride because of his size. He was six foot five. Most runners, top say six foot, five foot 11, et cetera, and so forth. So here this man, here you are, you're doing this. You're, this is your stride, all right? His stride is this. So on 100 meters, he's able to cover less of the distance because his strides were bigger. His strides were far bigger than those he was running with. Why am I saying this morning, church? The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are what? Ordered by God. And what we must understand this morning, church, is some steps are giant strides. Listen, one decision you make can set you on a course for life. For a very long time. One decision. One stride. So all of a sudden you are in this position for a long, 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 long time this morning. But our decision this morning can set us back. I think about people who backslide. And I thank God that God is the God of a second chance and God is willing and is waiting for them to come back home. But here's the thing. They come back, they recommit, they're forgiven, slate white clean. But here it is this morning. You wonder if they simply served God, where would they be by now? Because it's made a decision to set them back. God still has stuff for them now, but now it's going to take even longer. Now it may not even happen because of a decision, because of a stride this morning. And this morning, church, you and I, we're going to be directed by God. It's very, very, very simple this morning. When God moves, you move. Verse 21 to verse 22. So it was when the cloud remained only from evening until morning, when the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they would journey, whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud was taken up, they would journey, whether it was two days, a month, or a year, that the cloud remained above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would remain encamped and not journey, but when it was taken up, they would journey. When God moved, they moved. When God paused, they paused. The problem is we want to move and expect God to follow us. It don't work like that. It doesn't. Last time I checked, he's the head of the church. That he leads and we follow. Listen, there is no room for two gods in your life. There's no room for two heads in your life. I love what Pastor Ruby says. Anything with two heads is a monster. You can't say, I, you know, God's going to lead me, but I'm going to do what I want to do. Is even he is leading you or not? It's that simple. Here's this journey, church. This journey was full of uncertainties. It was, there was the uncertainty of departure. They had no idea when they were going to move again. It's not like God told them, you know what, in two o'clock, uh, in exactly two o'clock, uh, uh, GMT time, we're moving. They had no idea when they were going to depart. They had no idea this morning how long they were going to be going for or how long they're going to be parked up for. Sometimes we find ourselves in a certain place and we're wondering when, how, when, oh, why is it, wait, 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 just wait. God has you there for a reason. Just wait. And when he's ready to, he'll let you know. 
But we like to fuss about something just kind of. What's all right? You keep on going. I'm just going to wait right here. You're on your own. You take care of it yourself. You fix it yourself. They had no idea of the destination. Hey, they are they going? Like, where are we going to end up now? We're there one month. We're there one week. We're there one year. None of this place we have no idea about. Where are we going to end up now? Just uncertainty. That's like salvation. You have no idea. I have no idea this morning. What God wants from us is obedience. Just obey me. You know what I've learned, church? There comes a point where God is going to move. And we need to be ready to move with God. I'll say it again. There comes a point when God is going to move. And we need to be ready to move with God. This is what they learned during the deliverance of the Passover, the 10th plague. Every firstborn is going to die. Every firstborn, except the, the one who is in the house with the blood of the lamb and covered the door of the house, right? And the Bible tells in Exodus chapter 12, verse 11, thus you shall eat with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, so you shall eat, listen to this, in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. God tells, gives them instruction. Get the lamb, get the blood, put it in the doorpost of the heart. When the angel comes, it will pass over. You're going to eat, you're going to eat um, the, 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 what's it called, the Passover meal. The moment that happens, you need to be ready to leave. Basically, be dressed to leave. You're getting out of here. Could you imagine if some people didn't believe God and just um, stay where they are? They had to be ready. Okay, time to go. God's moving. They had to be ready to move with God. Because God was going to move. Listen, I don't fully understand it all. But I know there's timing involved. I think about nations that we could not enter before as a fellowship. We tried, etc. But now that door is open. And when that door opens the morning, church, we can't get caught up in our own lives and our own agenda because God is moving. We need to be ready to step in and do something while we can do it this morning. One man said these words, God is constantly on the move. I cannot stay where I am and follow God at the same time. Listen, church, responding requires movement. To follow God, you and I must be willing to move. Too often we give too much power to our circumstances. We let our circumstances dictate to us what we do and when we can do things this morning. And we fail to trust this so-called great God we sing about all the time. Listen, I've learned to reach the next level this morning or to get out of the situation you're in this morning. You have to be ready to move with God. Ready to step out with God. Ready to believe God. I want to close quickly look at God's destination. I believe this one of the most exciting place in life to be is where God is. There's a group of people in the United States, only the Americans this morning. There's a group of people in the United States, they're called storm chasers. I don't know who, this, who these people are this morning, but I, I think they're crazy because they've made it their life's work to find out where storms, tornadoes are forming, go over to where the tornadoes are forming, watch it form, then chase it. That's their life. You and I get up and work, etc. No, no, their life is get up, where's the next tornado? We're going to find out where it is, watch it form, and it begins to cause destruction. We're going to just chase the tornado and follow the tornado. Here's the problem with tornadoes. Tornadoes kind of do what they want to do. They're a bit like us. They, they, they don't, they, a tornado is not going to say, okay, I'm going to go uh, down 100 meters, then at, 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 uh, at, at, the, at the turn of, of, of a land down road, I'm going to take a right. And, and like, no, no, it doesn't do that. It will go into houses, go into schools, go into, into the sea. It will just go anywhere it wants and cause complete havoc. And many of them have died chasing storms. But here's this morning. There's something exciting. They call it the, 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 the 
thrill, thrill, thrill chases. There's something thrilling about doing so this morning. It's a bit like God this morning. If you want to be involved in the excitement and the thrill of God this morning, you have to be willing this morning to take exactly the same route that God is moving on. Listen, I'll say something this morning, church. If you're no longer excited about where God is moving or what God is doing, you need to check your spiritual pulse because you're probably dead. That God is doing something. God is God is doing something. And we need to be able to say, wow, whoa, okay, I see this. So as God is taking his people on this journey, he wasn't just leading them. What we need to see, church, he was the destination. He was bringing them closer to himself. Listen, the whole idea of this journey called life is to know God. I want you to think about it when it, when it comes to us as a church. Think about the Chestnut Community Center. Think about it. Think about Tottenham Green Leisure Center. Think about N17. Think about Nine Bruce Grove. Now think about 551B where we are this morning. It's another step in our overall journey towards God. But what we need to see, church, what is our what, what is the whole destination? The destination, listen, the destination of this church is not to get a bigger, better building. As much as that'd be nice. The destination of this church is not to become more prominent in society, on the community. The destination of this church this morning is God. It's God. James 4 8, draw near to God and he what? Draw near to you. Listen, God wants to unsettle us in order to move us closer to him. And he will do it, you know. He will unsettle your life. He will unsettle my life so that we will simply be closer to him. I want you to think about this, church. As the people were moving towards the cloud, what they were really doing is they were moving towards God. They were moving towards God himself this morning. And God describes the land that he was taking them as a land that's flowing with milk and with honey. It was a place of blessing. It was the promised land. It was this place that was going to be a paradise for the people of God. But what made the land flowing with milk and honey was not so much a land milk and honey. It was God himself. See, when we make God our destination... We don't just get God himself, but we get everything that comes with God. This is why we're told to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and church, everything else shall be added. This is why Peter in Luke chapter 5 left all, including the catch of a lifetime to follow Jesus Christ. Listen, church, this is what this man always wanted. He always wanted this great catch of a fish. He's finally got what he's always wanted this morning. Maybe this morning, this is what you've always wanted, true love. Maybe this morning, this is what you've always wanted, that great job. Maybe this morning, this is what you always wanted, amen, that house in Chelsea. And But we find a man, he gets what he's always wanted, and he leaves it all for Jesus. Do you know why this morning, church? Because when God gives us a miracle, it's not that we'll fall in love with a miracle. When God gives us a miracle, is that we fall in love with the one who gave us the miracle this morning. So it's always about him. The end game is him. The target is him. It's all about him this morning. I wonder this morning if you ever had one of those Christmases that you, when you woke up in the morning and, you know, you're, you're, you begin to open the gifts in Christmas. And you're opening the gifts in Christmas and you're looking for the gift that you expected to be there, but it was never there. You've got a little car, you've got a whatever it is, and that's nice, but that's not what you want. You want a bicycle. And you open all these gifts, all these gifts, all these gifts, and your eyes are not even focused on them. You're waiting for the one you want. And it never, ever shows up. Listen, church, when we reach our destination, when we come to the very presence of God this morning, 
Everything will be there. God is faithful. God is good. I want to close quickly. Three things. Number one, when God is our final destination, we find everything we need. Firstly, we find protection. The Bible says he protected his people in the midst of the wilderness. The Bible tells them that the Egyptians, there came a point where the Egyptians tried to attack them and the cloud came in and he blocked the Egyptians with the cloud. And the Bible says they were in darkness, but the children of Israel receiving light. It tells us this in Exodus chapter 14, verse 20. Now it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel that it was a cloud of darkness in one and it, and it gave light uh, by night to the other so that one did not come near the other all night. So here are the Egyptians, they're in darkness. The cloud is giving them darkness, but here are the Israelites, same cloud, but it's giving them light. It's a bit like the word of God, don't you think so? That when the world looks at the Bible, they have no idea what it says. When the world looks at the Bible, it brings confusion. But when a child of God looks at the Bible, it brings clarity, brings light, brings understanding, brings direction, begins to show you, okay, this is what this means. This is how I need to do this. If I do this, God will begin, you know, it, that is what it does this morning. That God protects us, church. Second of all, I mean, we find provision. Everyone who lived in the wilderness, it was an environment that was harsh. It was an environment of death. It was an environment that was very, very uh, uh, challenging. But for the people of God, when you look about the, the wilderness life, it was one of promise. It was one, amen, that God providing for them. The Bible speaks about this is where they received the manna from heaven. This is angels' food. Now, listen, when we begin to obey God and walk with God and move with God, God has made a promise. I'm going to provide for you. Never seen the righteous beg for bread. Lastly, this morning, it's a place of purpose. Listen, in Egypt, every day was the same. It was simply another day in the brick factory. Another day, just big bricks, uh, makes bricks, make bricks, make bricks, make bricks. That was their life. Nothing more, nothing less. Nothing changed this morning. But the truth is this morning, here is God. He's taking them to a place of destiny, of purpose, where they can truly build a life and have a future, not just for themselves, but for their children and their children's children. I want to close with one word from God. It's very, very simple this morning. Simply is this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. This is where you're going to receive the cloud and the fire. He will direct your path. Listen, sometimes it's challenging trust in God. Sometimes, amen, you know, it's, it's all these things. But if you would trust God, God has made a promise, I'm going to get you to where you need to get to. Amen. Let's bow our heads uh, and close our eyes. Amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. I'm going to get you to where you need to get to. He's faithful like that. I'm going to get you to where you need to get to. Maybe we're here this morning, you're not right with God. You haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. There is sin in your life. All sin does is provide darkness. All sin does is lead us astray. All sin does is separate us from God. We're making wrong decisions, wrong choices. This morning, the Bible tells us our God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. He that believes in me shall not dwell in darkness. We live in a world where there are so many voices. And the majority, the absolute majority are leading us into darkness. But there's one voice that stands head above shoulders above all it is the voice of God it's not loud it's not it's not arrogant 
It's not brash. It's a still small voice. It's a still small voice. I believe is speaking right now to somebody that you need to be born again. It's a still small voice that's saying, "You are my child. Come back home. Your way. It's time for you to come back home." You, you, you've, you, you've seen that the grass is really not greener on the other side. It's a still small voice that says, you have no idea how long you have left. Let me save you. Let me forgive you. I can begin to clean things up if you work with me, if you cooperate with me. It is a still small voice that says, I'm the alpha. I'm the omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. I am he who was dead, but is alive forever. And his name is Jesus. Very quickly, under the sound of my voice, you're here today. You're not saved. You're not right with God. The spirit of God is all over you. You need to get your heart right with God while there is still time. You need to get your heart right with God while he's calling you. And I know he is. That's you. We do one thing this morning. Say, Pastor, if you pray for me, I want to get saved. Pastor, if you pray for me, I want to give my life to Jesus. That's you. Come on, lift your hand up and put it down this morning. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy. He loves you. Just slip it up and put it down. It's my hand. I want to get my heart right. Maybe you're backsliding. You're away from God. You once had a relationship with God. But somebody or something took you away. Friend, I've been there. I'll tell you right now, there is no better place to be than the Father's house. There's no better place to be than the will of God. Prodigal son, prodigal daughter this morning, if you humble yourself and realize you need to come back home, God is not here to condemn you. He's here to welcome you back. Will you recommit your life back to Jesus? That's you. Come and lift your hand up. Raise my hand. Back slide I want to recommit my life. I want to come back home to Jesus. Put it up and put it down. You're not doing this for me. You don't do this for this church. God is watching. He's watching. Says in this word, if you if you if you if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you before my father in heaven. But if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father in heaven. This is for you, and this is for him. Nobody else. The Spirit of God is on you. Final time, I'm going to say, you're going to say, you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. You know you're not. Or you're backslider. You once were, but you're away from God today. Today, you want to get your heart right again. If that's you, you didn't lift your hand before, but you want to do it now. Just lift it up and put it down this morning. Here's my hand. God, I'm here. God, I'm going to give my life. God, I'm going to serve you. God, help me. And he will. And he will. He's just waiting on you. Final time. Up and down. That's it. Up and down. Amen. Praise God. And I want to speak to God's people this morning. We are on this journey called life. And I'm talking to my brothers and sisters this morning. We have no idea. We have no idea what we're doing. We really don't. We have no idea where it's going to take us. We don't. But there's somebody who does. And he wants us to just obey him. Stop leaning to our own understanding. It's, it's, it never works right. It always ends up a mess. And there's going to be some uncertainties. But you need to have a confidence God is leading you. That God is taking me to where he wants me to be. And where he wants me to be is to be close to him. And nothing no one else is as close to him as I am Just, you can never go wrong when God's leading you this morning there are men and women here God says it's about making the right move the right move this morning is about when you and I will move with God we've been moving with our flesh we've been moving with society we move in the government, we move in the family. It's time to move with Jesus. Get as close to him as possible. He'll finally get you to where you need to get. That's all of us. God moves, we better move. God is moving. Let's all rise up to our feet this morning. The altar is open. Let's come and find something to pray. Let's come and lay order of God this morning.